<laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Some riders, this season hasn't worked out, right? They haven't had the big result that they were looking for. So I think you'll see some of those riders in particular, like absolutely going for it this weekend and others like Sophia that has this series wrapped up. She's like, oh, I'm so tired. You know, it's like the letdown has already happened. So it's really hard to motivate yourself when you're, you've already won. But Keegan is a racer, true and true, like at the heart of the matter. So he's gonna show up Keegan style. <laughs> we also have the gravel world champ here, uh, Kaja. Anytime you can see the rainbow jersey show up at a lifetime Grand Prix event, that's the dream. In cycling, there's a lot of luck involved. I think it comes down to mindset. You're racing with a group and you're racing the entire time. Come on, ladies, up, up, up. You'll see riders that are desperate. Desperate for that big result. I mean, honestly, we moved from Austin to get up here and kind of get started with like the biking culture. And so far it's pretty awesome. It's turning into kind of like a Whistler almost. Nice. All we need is a lift. <laughs> We're at the 2023 Big Sugar Classic right here in downtown Bentonville at the expo for our gravel event coming up this weekend. First gravel race this weekend over here. Seventh stop of the 2023 Lifetime Grand Prix finale of the season. The bike culture is like probably no other place I've ever been. Trail systems they're building is like nothing I've ever seen anywhere in the country. We will see you out on the ride. Have fun and um, let's go do this. Big Sugar Classic, getting ready to ride 100 miles in some beautiful landscape, exploring new trails and geography I've never ridden on. It's like Disneyland for bikes. I mean, you pick an intersection, you might see commuters, you might see mountain bikers, and you'll see people out for a road or gravel just heading out of town. If you ride a bike and you haven't been to Bentonville, this might be the best week of the year to come down here. The Big Sugar Classic, our vision here was kick off the week with a really kick-ass mountain bike race. Little Sugar Mountain Bike Race is a true single track mountain bike race. And for those elites, they had a $65,000 prize purse. That's the biggest prize purse in US mountain biking. Feels like there's more eyes on bike racing over here now. Like there's a lot more fans. Like people would ride by and ask for a selfie, or like there are a bunch of kids getting autographs to finish, which was really cool. You guys race too? This whole community is focused around bikes. I've never seen anything like it. Actually, choose the route, right? Race route. It's been a long year, uh, so it's good to kind of tap this one out, but I kept the motivation high enough, so yeah. Yeah, a lot to gain here. Not really anything to lose. All right, see you guys. Wow. The Grand Prix points landscape has fallen apart a little bit for me and that Leadville was such a bust. I don't have an answer, but I was just a shell of myself. Thought a lot about dropping out, but uh, you don't do that in these races. You still finish no matter what, as long as you can. Starting to see riders start to count. Guys who are like in seventh overall covering guys who are eighth and ninth overall, right? Like guys are starting to think about that in the cash a little bit, but for me, it doesn't change anything. Like I just, I wanna, I wanna do well here. It's nice to be racing with no pressure, you know? Like, series is wrapped up, so I just need to start the race, and just here to have a good time, you know? I knew this year was gonna be a bit tougher, 
So you know, I just came to these this year with the same approach as last year, just you know trying to take every race one at a time and um, just ride smart. You know, if they want to beat me, they're gonna have to attack and like put me under pressure because that's what it's gonna take. You know, if they want to win. Let's hear it for Keegan on the Leadville performance. Yeah. Worst record. Keegan has it locked up, and he's dangerous in the sense of what is he gonna do. But he's not who I'm focused on, obviously, and that changes the way that you have to race. And of Russell and Cole and Pete, I have the best two last races. And so going into this race, it just allows me to go and be myself, which is how all of us race the best. There's the world champs in Italy the other week, and obviously some of the US people went over and they're like, oh, this jet lag. I was like, don't even, you're saying that to the wrong person. I've spent a year being jet lagged racing. Curious to see which of the international guys reapplies for next year, wants to do it again. It's exhausting all the traveling and like sofa hop and beg people for, to stay places. It is different. It's different and it takes big sacrifice for riders from overseas. Alexis, you're sitting in a pretty good spot this year. You had a really consistent last year. What are your goals and expectations for Saturday? We're gonna have some good competition, so it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. And we have our own start this year, so I'm pretty excited. I'm hoping to get in like top 10 would be nice and just finish out strong. Haley, you are our returning lifetime Grand Prix champ. You won the big purse last year, coming up on the end of the second season. What are your takeaways from the Grand Prix? The season has been a mediocre one for me in terms of performance. I have too many irons and too many different fires. I haven't cracked the code on how to actually be as fast as I can all the time. Um, but yeah, I guess just the, the importance of consistency is a, a big takeaway and something that you can transfer to other aspects of your life. So, yeah, I'm gonna pare it down and refocus for next year. Challenging course, huh? That's a fun course. Yeah. I did make mistakes this year, both during the races and then also sometimes in the preparation of them, so it's on me. With the last couple of seasons being so up and down for me, I'm really determined to have the year that I know I'm capable of. If I want to perform in the series overall, we just have to figure some things out and like move forward and just like make it happen next year. The future of the Grand Prix, you know, it is the future. <laughs> I feel like it's it's my future and it's the future of you know those of us that uh, really believe in the series and, and enjoy the opportunities that it brings really excited for 24 already. This year has been a long year of figuring out exactly what lights my fire. And I think I've been balancing a lot between like, I mean, you know, like we've been going all over the world doing all these different races and kind of feeling like for some of them we're just surviving, you know? And you were like, well, what do you want to win? <laughs> I think I just realized, like, I want to win, you know? And so we went all in for that Marathon World Cup and saw what it meant to go all in for something. And now I think we have a different focus, a bigger focus for these events, for sure. Narrowing the focus. This is a very long season. And so these racers, to be on for that many stops of the Lifetime Grand Prix, they are running on fumes. Sometimes you don't know how exhausted you are until you cross that finish line of the last race and then you kind of melt into a puddle. It has been a long year, um, but yeah, motivated. I think I found a good, a good groove. I'm kind of using that momentum and um, racing here in Benville is fun. I enjoy it, so it's a nice way to end, end the season. I know how the racing is, it's different here. Being prepared equipment-wise, really dialing in pretty much everything the best you can. Having a race go smooth is proven to be quite difficult. It's like cracking the American code.
I feel really good going into this. Kind of, I feel like I'm the upswing of my season and where I'm at, and it's just very special being here. Event changed my life last year, and so I'm just yeah. really excited to like take all that in on race day, and hoping for a clean day. <laughs> I am sitting ninth right now, and I'll be honest, like I had higher hopes for um, a higher overall ranking this year after a really big high winning this event last year. Starting the season, I got this ingrained in my head that I'm like, gotta win, wanna win, that's like all that I was chasing. But at the end of the day, like it's very unpredictable and cruel sport. And I learned that this year. You put so much into something and it can be taken away so quickly. Giving yourself grace after these events. It's taken me a while to get there, but I think that's been really refreshing for me. Yeah, what, are you, what are you running this year? Oh, look at that smile. <laughs> Wearing mountain bike tires. Two twos. Wow. The mountain bike race last week was not without its True. flat tires, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't let it give you overconfidence. Mm. Yeah. No, I'm going to be careful. The, the but... problem is you can't be careful. <laughs> oh. Call it out. I know. There's so something. sharp. Yeah. Did you see what it did to my just... car tire? No. <laughs> yeah. The oh roads are nice here. Is that all sliced? Yeah. Like, just wow. Like... Coming into Big Sugar, I'm sitting third overall and two points behind Alexi, two points ahead of Fincy, uh, four points ahead of Lachlan. So we're all super close. You know, when you really think about it, it feels like a whole season of work I have to lose if I, if I have a bad race. And I'm just so excited to just give it everything I have one last time this year. We have three different meals going for three different athletes. <laughs> they all are pretty much Look identical. <laughs> for me, I, I want to win the race. Our top five, that includes Lachlan Morton, Brandon Johnston, Alex Howell, Alexi Vermeulen, and Peter Stedna. I came really close to a win in Trinidad and just kind of messed it up in, in the finish. We're going to see Brandon Johnson, Peter Stedna, and Alexi Vermeulen coming through. Here they come right now. These are your elite men's finishers. Who's it gonna be? Look at that! Boom! Alexi Vermeulen takes it! Missed an opportunity, even though a podium in the Grand Prix is right up there. Number 51 taking third, Brandon Johnson. I just was annoyed to come so close to a win. And wins are not easy to come by in, in the Grand Prix, that's for sure. For me, it's another chance to be at the front and, and potentially win an event, which I think a lot of people want to do. And, um, there's one person who's done a lot of it and not many others, so. We all kind of have already taken our drops. <laughs> so it's gonna be everyone out for blood. <laughs> My drops are worse than anyone's, so I'm just. So you gotta go for this race a bit tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. My goal was top 10 in the, in the series, but I think within myself, I thought like, that top five kind of area would be a solid, solid result for the, the overall. Um, if we were talking back around the crusher time, I was considering going home, to be honest. Turning point in my whole season, I would say, would be the top of Columbine. Passing riders and, and you know, not even looking back. There it was like, you know, all is not lost and I think I can turn it around. Yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. Pumped for tomorrow. And although there's a lot of pressure, um, definitely fortunate to have that pressure going into the final race. That, that means that it's been going well. So mm. one final hurrah and uh, gonna squeeze absolutely everything out of my body to, to be as high up as I can. How do you think the separate women's start will change the race dynamic compared to last year? 
yeah, I'm looking forward to a less chaotic start <laughs> and being able to see like where the other women are so we can actually race each other versus racing men. <laughs> It's a sea of lycra here this morning in town. Merely a heavy 100 miles separating you from the end of the lifetime of Grand Prix. I want to start super hard here. Y'all get it? I have the skill set to really cause some damage. So I'm going to twist the screws for, for the first little bit and then uh, try to conserve as much as possible until the end. We're happy to be back here in Bentonville. It's going to be a barn burner of a race. Conditions have been dry for a number of days here. Got some great chunky gravel awaiting these riders as they sort out the top 10 in our overall standings. Coming out of Schwamming in the Rad in Leadville, I ended up back in the fight. We have a 5.5 mile neutral rollout. It is until the very first dirt section. I want to be animating the race from the gun. I expect carnage and then, you know, the best of feelings at the end. Please, media, out of the shoot. We got a minute to go. We are now inside of one minute to start. Riders, we are going to give you a countdown now from five, four, three, two, one. And we are underway. Benville, make a little noise. Last year, I just came in with the mentality like I wanted top three, no matter what. If I blew up, I blew up. And definitely trying to bring that same mentality into this weekend and just see what happens. Keegan and Sophia have locked up first place. Second on down is up for grabs. So there are athletes right now that are thinking, how am I moving around and what money's available and where am I gonna end up in the top 10? There are athletes in 25th place that are thinking, how do I get into the top 15 so I automatically can qualify for next year? You know, there's going to be some athletes that are going to take some risk, but you get out there in some of that chunky gravel and you end up with a flat that can change the dynamic quickly. All right, we're going to move right into getting our elite women now into the grid. The question is, who is out here to go for it? And who's trying to play defense? So we've got a very talented field of professional women here. Still a big battle going on for the standing, so a lot to be decided out on the roads around Bentonville and up into Missouri here today. Are we going to see huge performances out of those that have been kind of mid-pack in the money? And are we going to see some riders really playing defense, wanting to protect their spots? I want to wish everyone a safe race. We are now coming up on 10 seconds till the start. We'll give you a countdown, but Bentonville, you're going to make a little noise for our professional women in five, four, three, two, one. Bentonville makes a noise. We are underway with our professional women series final. <laughs> Let's go! Because we have the separate women's start, the dynamic is a little bit different than last year. I think this is going to be a totally different race this year, and I am pumped on it. We have, of course, the Gravel World champ, the Rainbow Stripes, that you can see right there. She is here racing. It's so exciting. That does not happen very often. Last year felt like the competition for first ended before it even started. We were so mixed up in the men, I had no idea who was in front. We're all asking, so are we racing for first? Are we racing for fifth? We have no idea. And that makes it really hard to make the correct tactical moves. It looks like Hannah Otto is on the front of the peloton right now. You know, big sugar today, separate start for the women. And we'll get to see some true women's racing. Everyone is now going because they want to enter this dirt section first. This year, there's not gonna be any sneaking away. If you get away at the start, it's because you had the legs to do so, not because I didn't see you make the move. It is so dusty. You can't see. If you're like fifth wheel, I mean, you simply can't see. And so I'm excited for people to have to really be strong enough to get on the way on their own and lay it all out there. Reminder for folks floating around town, we're going to keep you updated throughout the day. So stay tuned if you're downtown in Bentonville. We'll be back and forth on the mics as much as we can.
Kimo, we're about 12 miles into Big Sugar, and we're with the pro men. You can see Cole Patton near the front. As soon as you get out of town, you're in just farmlands out there. There's some wild dogs out there on course. We've been calling it Hoon Dally. Toby picked up a big stick today. I was like riding through with a stick and ready to whack it. Yeah, I got chomped last year. <laughs> now I have a different strategy. I yell at them, growl, and in a really deep, angry voice, they run away. <laughs> we do have someone off the front. It looks like John Borstelman's taking a little bit of a flyer here. I think he's put a 10 to 15 second gap on the field. He's uh, trying, to, trying to break away. He's got some pavement right now, so could be a good time for him to put a stamp on this race. You know, my, I guess my definition of failure on the bike would be just not, not having the legs to be in the mix. Last year in the 2022 edition, John was off the front and he flatted on a descent going into the second checkpoint. Mother I don't know if I would say I'm driven by success or failure. I'm more just driven by love of racing my bike and just being in the room where it happens mixing it up with the big boys, going for broke, pedaling hard. Looks like they pulled back in, Borstelman. He's definitely racing aggressive today. As we were discussing, oh, oh, right oh we just had a, we just had a pile up there. Four the riders that. who went down. Looks like Matt Beers is down. Oh, you know, that's where gravel is a lot like road racing. You have to stay on the front. You want to be safe, you have to stay on the front. Unfortunately, Matt Beers got caught up in that crash. Let's hope we see him get back on and, and bridge back up to this lead group because he's closing out the season strong. We've got our leaders of our elite men through the first time check at mile 23. One lone leader, Jonas Orset, with just about a 12 a second lead. So, a bit of a bold move to go off so early, but, well, someone's got to be the one to take the race by the horns. So So we're getting some on-course intel from our professional women's group as well. Seems we've already got a group of seven moving clear with a rather large gap. Sofia Gomez Villafane, Alexis Scarta, Jenna Reinhardt, Cassia Niwadoma, and Paige Onweller. Coming into this race, and Sofia Gomez Villafane, as we all know, has it locked up. Alexis Scarta probably looking and hungry for her first win in the Grand Prix this year. Alexis Scarta and Sophia, this is a battle that has played out throughout the season. Oh, Alexis, looks like she's making a move on the side there. I think Alexis is gunning for this race. She's, she has been kind of, you know, second, third step on the podium multiple times this year. She's having a phenomenal year. Seems like Alexis hasn't quite figured it out to beat Sophia. So we've hit a rare section of pavement here at mile 20.5, and I see Kaja Noadama and Sophia Gomez Vijapane have separated themselves from this lead group of eight. In my opinion, Sophia has better tactics. And I think Alexis has learned a lot over the past couple of seasons. But you know, they all must have a, a mark on Kasha's back. Front of the women's field, and it doesn't get more elite than this. I heard she just got her rainbow jersey yesterday. You can see Kasha giving some direction to Sophia. Our leaders in the elite women's field now through time and check number one. Two leaders with about a 10 second gap. On that chase group, Garda, Onweller, Allison, Sturm, Jackson, Hicks, and Reinhardt. Sofia Gomez Vijafane is animating this race. Her plan is clearly to attack. Kaja Nuadoma has followed her every move. Another way straight. Oh, sh Did they just go the wrong way? We have just seen our two leaders miss this right-hand turn and gone off course. We're trying to find our leaders here, Kasha, and um, uh-oh. We may have our two leaders off course. 
This has completely changed everything. So your new leader is Jenna Reinhardt and Sarah Sturm. So now these two ladies have a gap on our elite women's field. I went straight over the bars and yeah, my collarbone is pretty much broken right now. I was trying to just get to the water point, but I realized it's still quite far and now the adrenaline's wearing off. So she's, she's feeling a bit nasty. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. It looks a bit cool. Yeah, you can see the blood. You have blood through your adrenaline. Yeah. You can see you. I'm not going to touch it, but you're The wrong. collarbone's sticking out a bit. Yeah, she's not doing too good. Matt Beers finding the floor somewhere out on the course, and it appears Matt has broken his collarbone. So that's unfortunate for Matt Beers taking him out of competition here. Some more information we're getting from our leaders of the men's race, 35 riders in that lead group. We've already seen some of the first flats of the day. Brendan Johnson, one of our first victims, so he is on the side of the road trying to repair a flat, get back into contention along with a couple of other riders. Nice pick, Brendan. Go get him. He's gonna try and keep tabs. Once again, our, both our elite men and our elite women as things continue to unfold. So our men now for the 37.8 mile mark. Jonas Orsett and John Borstelman still are two leaders. Just about 25 seconds ahead of the rest of the group. Tasman, Nick Gervis, Alex Howes, Lawrence Tendam, Braden Lang, Brendan Johnson, Russell Finsterwald, and your current series leader, Keegan Swenson, in that group as well. Let's go, baby. Nice work, baby. Russell! Russell, Russell! Slow down! Slow down! It's been a season of up and downs, I would say. Things started really well in the early half, winning BWR California the next weekend, showing up and sprinting Keegan at Sea Otter. Howard, Howard! Oh. And then just kind of like nosedived a little bit, I would say. Just hope they're all not injured. I'm sure they'll have some words with each other out there, but we'll see. My two biggest goals of the season were Unbound and Leadville, both races I flatted at. Keegan went by Finsty, went to the front. They went up a short little steep pitch here and I'm seeing Finsty just come off the back and he looked like he was really struggling to turn over the pedals. Still been pretty consistent. Obviously I'm sitting fourth in the Grand Prix, which isn't terrible. But yeah, definitely missed a few benchmarks that I was hoping to achieve this season. We now got our men through mile 55. Time split out on course. So now officially past the halfway mark. No, we were uh, back up to the uh, lead men. It looks like John Borstelman is still off the lead. Then you got a chase of about 12 guys. We've got Borstelman, Brendan Johnston. We've also got Payson McKelvin, Cole Patton, Keegan Swenson in that mix. Keegan's been doing a little bit of work at the front to try and chase Borstelman back. Whenever something is just continually reinforced in the media and headlines, like it just almost becomes like branded. We had a breakaway of Borstelman, everything now all back together at the front. And everyone just comes to accept it as like this way that the world works. Kind of fun seeing Keegan in his Stars and Stripes jersey. He just won the Gravel National Championships. I think he was fifth at Gravel Worlds a couple weeks ago. It's in a way that's been Keegan winning bike races. When they're coming up a steep hill here and once again, we see Keegan Swenson go to the front and, uh, and drive in the pace. It was a really interesting moment when Keegan decided, okay, I'm gonna go race Gravel World Championships this year. Everyone was like kind of waiting on the edge of their seat, like, how is he going to do? We get a couple more updates from our professional men. Alex Howes is now flatted out of that lead group. If he didn't do well, it kind of delegitimizes the racers in the Lifetime Grand Prix because he's smoking a lot of those racers. 
Also some big news, Payson McKelvin dropped from that group. Russell Finsterwald dropped from that group. You got these world tour teams out there working together and to see him get fifth place in a race like that after crashing and bridging back, he's validating what we're doing here in North America for sure. And I think he's helping to put it on the radar. So 73 miles under the wheels right now. John Borstelman back all by himself. He's got about a minute and 20 second advantage right now. Come on, Cole! Yeah, baby! Our goal is for more legitimacy around gravel cycling. That means seeing the United States on the top of the podium, whether that's a world championship or the Olympics, it all flows together. Alexi Vermullen moving himself up into the top 15 right now, but he's still a little bit behind that chasing group. To see Keegan go over there and finish fifth and to have a team both for the men and the women and this team dynamic, a lot of those riders got to know one another on our courses. And then together they've decided to take on this challenge of going to a world championship. And I think that that's like a byproduct of the of what we're together creating in, in gravel. We have had a phenomenal battle. A lot of lead changes. John Forselman taking repeated stabs at getting out there solo only to continue to be reeled in, drop, catch back on. We've got a lot of riders in that leading group. Keegan Swenson, Lachlan Morton, Brendan Johnson, Cole Patton. Still a lot can happen from a second down through 10th spots. Updates from our women's field. Sophia and Kasha on the attack, trying to bridge it back up to the leader, so back on course. So right now, Reinhardt and Sturm, your two leaders quickly approaching time check number two. If you want to do well at the Grand Prix, you have to be fully focused on the Grand Prix. This race is coming back together. Our women officially through time at check number two at Pineville. Kasia Niwadoma, Sofia Gomez Villafane, back to the head of affairs. Anna Hicks, Sarah Sturm, Whitney Allison Page Onweller, Jenna Reinhardt, Alexis Scarda. I've learned more this year than I've ever learned about myself as an athlete. This is huge. Sophia Gomez Vijafane is being dropped by this lead group. Are you done, Sophia? All right. <laughs> Via Fagne still out there racing, but pulling back on her effort a little bit. Kaja is attacked and she has gone solo off the front. Kasia Niwadoma is off the front by herself at mile 46. I kind of know the formula of how to be a bike racer now. Sarah Sturm, she's had two phenomenal years in the Grand Prix. We've heard she's been a little bit burned out thinking about doing some other things next year. I haven't had that confirmed yet. My relationships, my family and my friends, I care more about those things than a result. Big problem for Jenna Reinhardt, she's pulling over. It looks like it's a problem with her rear wheels. Our women's pro chase group starting to suffer a little more under the weight of that chase. Sarah Sturm. She is coming off the back of that chase group right now. There's always stuff that comes up that you're like, you know what, I'm gonna sacrifice this training ride. Lord Nick Crescento has broken off this chase group. Those things are really important to me and like there's no guarantees that people in your life are always gonna be there. Jenna Reinhardt has had to stop again. Another drivetrain problem. This is really bad news for Jenna Reinhardt. Five riders now on the chase. Sarah Lange just pulled over with a front flat. If that means that I'll never podium again, then I guess I need to be okay with that. And here we are. <laughs> the numbers, as they get smaller in the chase group, the odds are going down for them to catch your lone leader. So like part of me is curious. I don't know, maybe I will do it again. Maybe I won't. <laughs>
are with our lead group of men, Torbjorn Reed, uh, sitting right in front of Keegan Swenson. On the back, Brendan Johnston. It might be more interesting, the riders that are not here right now. We saw Pete Stedna dropped early, probably had a mechanical. Russell Finsterwald, haven't seen him in this group. Lexi Vermeulen's been out of this group for a while. We hear that he might be chasing back with uh, Lachlan. So some of these guys are got some opportunity. Brendan Johnston, he stays up here in this lead group. He's got a really good chance of moving up in the Grand Prix, making a few more bucks than he thought he was at the beginning of the day. I've struggled a lot in my, in my existence, to be honest. I had cancer back in like 2009. I was 17, 18. Really excited to see Brendan have another strong race. You know, he had that first podium in the Grand Prix at the RAD. I know about the struggle, but I haven't struggled like I did this year. Sometimes that's all you need to get yourself out of a rut or to have a breakthrough. And it seems like the RAD was a breakthrough result for Brendan Johnston. It comes from the pressure I had on myself. I convinced my wife that this was going to be a good idea and, and that I'd make something of myself over here. Our lead men at the 86.5 mile mark, so just about 18 miles away. I had a good business, a good job, and, and um, we were doing really comfortably. And, you know, I just threw all that in the air and, and convinced her that it was a good, good idea to come and do this. I've just got eyes on uh, Alex Howes, Lachlan Martin, and Alexi, all three Boulder guys chasing, and right now it's looking like they are maybe 20 seconds back, so they may they may get back up to this group. Halfway through when I'm finishing 26th or whatever, and really just not enjoying myself. Alex Howes, Lachlan Morton, and Alexi Vermullen have now caught the leading groups. We have now got a lead group of 10 guys. Being ill, I learned a lot about myself as a 17 year old and even now doing this. In the struggle, I'm learning a lot about myself at 31 years old. Brendan Johnson there sitting in second wheel. This is a fantastic gravel racing. As if you can take what you need from it, I think it's, uh, it's valuable. If you're anywhere here in downtown Bentonville, make your way over to the finish line area because it won't be too long now before our professional men wrap up the series final here of the Lifetime Grand Prix presented by Mazda. Kimo, we've hit the pavement. They are smooth sailing on this. It's been a good experience to have that struggle and it's learning how you respond when you're in the really shit times. Brandon Johnston sitting ninth wheel behind Alexi Vermeulen. Bachlin going through that turn in first wheel. Everybody staying together, no one making a move quite yet. Ten riders coming into the finish of the 2023 Big Sugar Gravel. We lost four guys on that hill. Cole Patton's dangling off the back of this group. They're motoring, it's a pretty fast descent. Down to a lead group of six riders and Brendan Johnston going to the front. Halfway through, I'm thinking like, I'm not gonna come back from this. This is not only my Grand Prix done, it's my attempt in the US done, you know? And I didn't stop there, I didn't hang up. I thought about going home, I didn't go home. It looks like Alexi Vermullen, Keegan Swenson, Brendan Johnston, Tasman, Nan Kerbis are all through the checkpoint. Oh They've dropped Tasman. Cole's on the front, Keegan's on his wheel. Brendan Johnston is still there. Torbjorn just went to the outside of that turn. A sprint group of five riders we're looking at at this point. Goes Alexi. Alexi's going, taking off. We've got some of our riders coming into sight. We should be seeing. That break spin unfolding, and here it is. Oh, look at that. And there goes Brendan Johnson opening up his sprint. Good noise right now, all the way down through the wire. Torbjorn getting the slight advantage and takes the win here in Bentonville, Arkansas. Second place to Brendan Johnston. finish for that final group. I got here and I'm like, there it is, you know, that's, that's what I told you I could do. And now I'm doing it. <laughs>
Ne? So Torben Andre Reed, your winner today of your men's race, Brendan Johnston coming through in second, Alexi Vermullen in third, Keegan Swenson in fourth, and Cole Patton rounding out your top five today. What a great finish to our men's race. We know our women should be coming down the wire. Last we heard, Kasia Niwadoma, your current world champion, out in front crossing through the 73-mile checkpoint. So Niwadoma hanging on to her lead right now with the better part of about 25 miles yet to race. We could have another shakeup at the front end of the women's race. We are with our solo leader, and she's been that way for the majority of the day, Kasia Niwidoma. Roughly 11 miles to go. That time gap, it's a four minute gap right now. You know, I hope 2024 continues to validate what we're trying to do for the sport in North America. One lone chaser, Lauren Di Crescenzo. You know, Lauren has come on strong at the back half of the year. Um, she had a bad accident a few years ago. She's a little bit more timid, but man, can she ever mash when she gets into the big gear, puts her head down and uh, just goes. We focus a lot with the Grand Prix on the front of the race. And what we're learning is the pointy end of the spear is getting faster and faster. It's getting more and more competitive. Two and a half minutes behind is a chase group number two. The beauty of what we've created here with the Grand Prix is we've got some athletes that they are just competitive as hell. Alexis Scarda, Paige Onweller, last year's winner is in there. Jenna Reinhardt is also in this group of five women. This series is an entirely different beast than really anything that anyone's done. Dear Storm, I was hoping she would take on some fuel, it would bring her back to life, but she has pops. It looks like her day is done. You know, gravel racing and the new mountain bike racing right now, it's a new frontier. Niwa Doma now putting her stamp of authority on the front end of this race. There's no chance she's going to let Lauren DiCrescenzo get back on her wheel. Just making amazing, powerful work of the final miles here in Bentonville. Niwa Doma is now within just a couple of minutes. This is a completely women-powered finish. I think we've proven that the Lifetime Grand Prix really is kind of the preeminent cycling series in North America. Give it up, Cassia Niwadoma! Your 2023 Big Circuit Gravel champion. All right, we've got our silver medalist in the women's event. Give it up, Laura Di Crescenzo. What a great job. The fight for third is on. That is going to be Anna Hicks. Feels it good. Is. Feel like I was consistent. I'm happy with that. I left it all out there. So it's just nice to finish the season on a high note. Definitely hard with female only start. That was awesome. Like that was the coolest race experience I have had. I loved it. It was like a true women's race, which was amazing. Thinking that whole time, like, see, this is why we need our own start. Like, oh, it, so was cool. so yeah. nice. it was own so yeah, own start. Yeah, yeah we'll talk to women. All of us, no matter how we felt out there, we're like, this is so sick to get to race with women, know where we are. Yeah, the women's start was awesome. I didn't even want to race today, but the women's only start meant that I was like, okay, I'll race for two hours and took a couple of rests, sitting on a horse for a while. And then at hour two, I was like, well, kind of just want to ride my bike for fun. How did you come back? You came from middle. Yeah, dude. It was cold. I didn't see you all day. It's all good. Does that make you want to come back and do it again or learn something else? I think I'm going to give it another go next year. Surprise. I mean, surprise. Surprise! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert, I'm doing the Grand Prix again. 
I've got a lot of work this off season I'm excited to put in. Really motivated going into the off season and uh, excited to already just start start building for next year. Before the race I would have told you I wasn't ready for the off season, but then an hour in I realized that I was ready for the off season. I'm sad but also happy and April will come before we know it. Let's give it up for your champion this one. I love that gravel is getting more professional. It's not necessarily something that any of us who were living in the gravel space asked for, at least not most of us. And on the top step for the day in your lifetime Grand Prix podium and out of Combs, Australia, this is Brandon Johnson. We're doing our best to adapt to it and make the best experience for those professional riders who are making a living in the sport and able to do so in the United States. That did great, didn't he? Not fast enough. <laughs> Haley does it. Oh my god, I'm so excited to rave. <laughs> yes! <laughs> so amazing to see a crowd like this show up. So amazing to see the phenomenal athletes that we've got. We just want to continue to grow the sport of cycling, not only for the elites and the pros, but for all of you that have come and just raced this event. It's other, other events of ours around the country. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting us. The meat and potatoes of our event is the mass participant. So it's amazing that we have the elites at the front and they get to come here and get the same experience that the mass participants are in the most legitimate field that they could possibly be. Your overall winner of the lifetime of Grand Prix presented by Mazda, give it up for Keegan Swetson. As there's more money coming into the sport and the more competitive it gets, we're gonna have to put some rules in place to, to try and maintain more fairness across the front end of the field, especially when it comes to the women. Put your hands together to the lifetime Grand Prix 2023 champion, Sophia Buckles, Beecher Buckles. We're having these discussions right now about creating some rules that they can't draft off of men. Giving women an opportunity to compete against women, that's what they want. And I think that's what we wanna see. We want to continue to be leaders and evolve where the sport is going here in North America.